Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and I'm gonna dive straight in. As a lover of murder mysteries, true crime, and all things forensic science, I am a strong believer of what those detectives always say that the absence of evidence doesn't always mean the evidence of absence. And the detectives always go on to say that actually if you have enough circumstantial evidence, you can convince the jury. So in my presentation, I'm going to refer to the circumstantial evidence as anecdotal evidence. So anecdotal evidence number one, my own experience of living with HIV and taking treatments. I was diagnosed in 1993, some 30, 31 years ago. And as you can see, um, HIV and I were cohabiting very happily together until I started taking treatment. And then a few years down the line, in comes hypertension into the relationship. And hypertension has persisted in being the third member of our relationship. Anecdotal evidence number two. I reached out to my peers, other women living with HIV, mm -hmm. and here I'd like to say a huge thank you to women living with HIV from the Power Group, to men, uh, Mental Mothers from Forum Network, and to women, the ladies from the Bearded and Flushed Project, uh, Bearded and Flushed uh, Women Living with HIV Going Through the Menopause. I, I'd like to thank them for responding to my WhatsApp question, as you do, the survey. And as you can see from their responses, uh, a significant number of them actually said yes. Anecdotal evidence number three, even Twitter agrees with me. <laughs> okay, uh, but that's all anecdotal evidence. I hear Milaned, uh, Milaned colleagues from the other side of the debate saying as they whisper to each other. So I went ahead and did some more traditional research and as my colleague has already shown, there's quite a number of studies who actually allude to that fact. But I went further and asked a question of my font of all knowledge and all things research, um, and Simon Collins from um, HIV iBase, and I asked him that question. And I was also particularly interested on the impact on women. So he gave me two short answers. The first answer was, you know, ARVs do not um, appear to cause you know, hypertension uh, in people living with HIV. And he went on to quote for me the DAD study, which many of you will know about. But what I'd like you to take away from this slide are two key things. Um, the DAD study was very robust, I agree, and it uh, you know, um, allowed for all the other factors. But the key thing here is that the study was done before integrase inhibitors were available or indeed widely, being widely used. And more research, more recent research, including the response study has actually shown that um, ARV might co uh, do cause hypertension. And these are a couple of studies which are presented very recently at CROI, which actually showed that um, um, ARVs do cause hypertension. For some, it shows that it's, the risk is higher in men, and others show that the risk could be higher in pregnant women. So back to the question. ART causes hypertension in HIV? The simple answer is yes, so please vote for us. Thank you very much. <laughs>